Call unto me, and I will answer you, and show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. They're hidden and fenced in. That's what the Amplified says. That's what the Amplified says. Mm -hmm. I'm Reverend Bob Butler, Gopi and Praise Fellowship. Uh, we are the host ministry of this whole series of uh, Great and Mighty Things programs. Uh, we've been doing this since January of 1987. Some of the programs you have watched have come from the archives of our uh, tape ministry, video ministry. And uh, uh, we're doing this series, which is a brand new series, on a book that we're in the process of publishing called What Are You Planting, Good Seeds or Weed Seeds? And uh, we're doing a commentary on the scriptures and in the writing of that book. So it's a commentary of a commentary. And uh, hopefully get that book published yet this year. We've got to do the cover and the back cover. We need a graphic designer that will work cheap <laughs> and, and put together a cover for us. And we're also contemplating uh, something that's new in the book industry uh, that's just now taking hold, and that's putting a CD commentary or a CD of the book inside back cover so that you can play that as you read the book so that you could actually take these videos that we're doing and play them back with the chapters that we're talking about and uh, relive the whole thing and, and glean even more from it than you do the first time through it. Okay, I'll turn it over to Reverend Kendall. <clears throat> Boy, that's scary to get to hear us again but anyway um, <laughs> in the in the fourth chapter so far Bob and Jerry have have dealt with uh, the first couple of pages and uh, we're down about halfway on the, yes. on the third page yep. and uh, so that's where we're going to start uh, today and uh, a little just a just a little bit of it is review but uh, just bear with us and we'll go on from there it says if these words bring conviction that it is time to repent and quit allowing this to happen in your life this is not an easy task. If you are doing these things, you can hold your head up and say, Glory to God, I'm walking right with God and doing what He wants me to do. Christianity is not an easy walk. It's only easy in the sense that we can turn to Jesus and He will lift us up. Sometimes He will carry us like the poem Footprint says. There are two sets of tracks on the sand and suddenly they turn into one set. The footprints of the Lord. When we get to the point where we are ready to give up and say, I can't do it anymore, Jesus carries us. In Matthew 11:30, Jesus told us that his burden is light and his yoke is easy. This is when we go with him, his way, but it's a constant battle with our flesh, our mind, and our emotions. James 2:18 says that we need to exercise our faith. Everyone has the measure of faith. It just needs to be activated and brought out where it can be used. Our faith, if it doesn't have good works, is dead, sitting there dormant. Comments? Uh, we're talking about the chapter that deals with faith in our own words. And uh, when you started out, it says that uh, we need to learn how to keep our mouth shut. <laughs> it says, are we willing to keep our mouth shut when someone comes against us? Sometimes the someone coming against us is ourself by the words that we speak. And we need to, we need to learn how, and for me this is a constant battle, to keep your mouth shut. You know, you can think things, but until you speak them out your mouth, they're not going to have much power. Uh, the, the Word of God says that speaking is, is the key. Uh, several, several places in the Bible, well, all through the book of Proverbs, it deals with words, speaking and words. And, and all of those things are, are truths that we need to grab a hold of because it, they have to do with dealing with our flesh side of life, our soulish realm side of life. Mm -hmm. But they also touch on the spiritual side of it, us as a spiritual being. And, and a lot of people really have not been trained to think of ourselves as a spiritual being. Mm -hmm. We know we are a soul, and we have that taught to us all the time. Well, And we know we live in a physical body because it's continually screaming at us for different things. Well, uh, we need to learn how to... Uh, control all of those things and that like it says here that's not necessarily easy it's not an easy walk but Jesus said it's easy if I'm there doing it with you it's not easy but it's easier than doing it the wrong way right <laughs> because they're get as as well as it says here our our flesh is continually buffeting us yes and and, and has for I mean you know th this is not a new theme um, back oh 
gosh, back in the 70s, uh, Ruth Ann Garlock transposed or, or whatever, edited uh, some writings that uh, uh, a Christian had done back in, I think it was like 1611 or something Ooh, like that. Way back. back in the 1600s, you know, uh, Brother Gernwall, uh, the Christian in complete armor, you know, uh, and which was the first time that I'd ever been exposed to uh, to her. And, and he talks about the flesh, and he said, you know, you got you you put the flesh upon the altar and, and said it'll just promise you anything to get on. I said, oh please, I'll, I'll be good. Yeah. You know? And, and uh, uh, the real good series of books. There's there's three different books. Uh, if if you I, I don't know if they're still in print or not, but uh, anyway, uh, if you're real nice, get a hold of us, and, and I, maybe I'll let you look at my copies. But anyway, um, <laughs> the uh, but but the Christians have have had to deal since Christianity started. We've had to deal with the flesh, yes, and and it's um, it, it's contrariness and it's it's being contrary to the to the things of the spirit. And, uh, it always wants its own way. It always wants its own way. It always, <laughs> you know, it, it wants what it wants, and it's like it's like a child. It wants right. what it wants and wants it now, and uh, and it wants it, its way, and and will cry if it doesn't get it. But we we then we have to overcome that, and we have to do it, um, you know, by the spirit and and the way that we learn how to work the spirit and make the spirit realm work is through the word of God. The words we speak. And words we speak, yes. A person cannot get saved unless somebody stirs up the faith that God gave him in the, to get saved. He can't accept Jesus as his Savior with the revelation knowledge that he's saved if someone doesn't present the word so that the Holy Spirit can convict him with the word. It's impossible. God says, I draw you. You don't draw me. So it's a matter of, of the Holy Spirit being the convictor. Uh, we're supposed to go out there and share the good news with faith in our words that God is going to accomplish that which his word says he will, and he will. Mm -hmm. But it's not us that does the convicting. It's not us that does the saving. It's the power of the Holy Spirit and the word of God that draws people to Jesus. Uh, you don't go around looking for God when you're a sinner, saying, hey, God, I need to get saved. I don't know of anybody. Maybe there's a few, but I don't know of too many that have gotten saved that way. You get convicted first. Some salvation, salvations are more dramatic than others, and sometimes there's a period of time in which the Holy Spirit needs to work. And I, I get reminded of the guy you talked about one time where he was at a hellfire and damnation session, but he didn't get saved. But later on in years, he went to another meeting where it was presented in a different way, and he went up forth and got saved. And, and you mentioned the fact that somebody had asked the guy, well, if you hadn't had that first experience, would you have gotten saved in this second experience? Mm -hmm. So there's a point for all of it. There's a period of time when the Holy Spirit needs to work. He doesn't slam bass and bang, salvation happens. You're saved, just like that. Now, there are on occasions where that might happen, but they're the exception. He will convict you, nurture you, and lead you to the point where you have to Make that decision with your own words from your own mouth. When your words come forth in the confession, your faith is activated and you are immediately saved. Imme salvation, and we've heard oh, many things taught on salvation by works, which is not true. Uh, but some people get the idea that if, if I can get myself good enough, mm -hmm. if I can apply my faith to the words that I know long enough, well, that isn't really how it works. It's really just saying, in, well, I'll put it this way. We make it complicated. God made it simple. That's right. Uh, he knows there are a lot of simple-minded people that have to handle it simply. <laughs> where did I leave off? He will convict you, mature, nurture you, and lead you to the point where you have to make that decision with your own mouth. When your words come forth in the confession, you get activated and you're immediately saved. Then you begin to change after that. Well, before we drop off on this next paragraph, you got anything you want to add to that? Uh, we hear too many people going around with this idea that, well, when I get good enough, then God will accept me. Or if I do enough good works, then I've got enough points in my, in my basket that I can go redeem them and then I can be saved. Uh, there's two different th uh, thought patterns there, and there's some more that are similar that are wrong. Well, 
that a lot of it comes to the fact that we just don't understand the spiritual realm and a lot of the things that are going on in it around about us to bring us to that time and place. Um, w all we see is the obvious visible thing and yet God has got a lot of things going on in, in the background that we never, we never see or we never will know. Well, James, he says, faith without works is dead. And I think that verse is taken out of context, mm -hmm. which means that, you know, faith, your faith, if you don't do the works, then you're not going to get saved. And that's a case where I think he, the a verse has been taken out wrong and, and presented wrong, given the idea of people that, well, if I get good enough, then God will accept me. Mm -hmm. And if I work hard enough, if I do morally right things, if I do good works for God, then, then I got a chance. Well, it isn't a chance situation. Salvation has nothing to do with what we do. Exactly. Exactly. Um, it has to do with what he did. It, it has to do with what he did. And, and there again, it, it, it really comes back to having to do with what we say. Exactly. I mean, we have to make the decision. That's our faith in our words. But That's we, right. We have to make, you know, uh, you know, here again, we're dealing with words, but... Everything that you see God doing, he does it by saying. That's right. God That's said, exactly. let there be. God said, let there be. God yes. said, let there be. What an example. Uh, huh? uh, that is his primary tool for accomplishing things. As yes. He says, uh, when you've got the, the power that, that he has and the, the, the faith in his words that he has in his words, uh, it comes to pass the way that he wants it to. Another verse came to mind when you said that. There is a verse in the Bible that says, when two of you, two or more of you agree as touching anything. Mm -hmm. Now, if two or more of you agree as touching anything and speak those in agreement, in, in faith-filled mm -hmm. agreement, the word of God for a situation, then God's going to honor that. Mm -hmm. whether, whether it has to do with uh, health, healing, finances, whatever the subject may be. So not only faith in your words, but being in agreement with others of like-minded faith, right. quote, unquote, to, to get something accomplished for the kingdom of God. That's one of the reasons why corporate prayer or praying with other people is, is so effective is because you get a, a larger power base yes. and, and, and you have people in that group that have different levels of faith yes and and different things going on and and it can be can be and is should be uh much more effective than than single prayer that's right uh, especially if you can get that working in in a husband and wife relationship yes because the closer that you can get the two yes. people that are doing the agreeing and the praying the closer in agreement you can get the more effective that is and the more effective that works and the way that it happens and works is by spending time with that other person. The only way you can, you can come into that kind of unity is by spending time with them. Just as you got, in order to get more unified with God, you spend time in His Word. All right. And uh, two people that are together a lot, they wield a lot of power. They they can they can bring a lot of, of stuff. Uh, uh, case in point, Jim Davis and I used to spend a lot of time together. We yeah. we 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 were together uh, a lot, and and people would call us up to pray. Uh, because they knew he would get answers, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we 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 are not as close now because we don't spend the time together. Well, you're farther apart what, physically too. We're aren't farther you? apart physically, and uh, but but that, that that physical contact and that physical you know being together, and, and because we knew that we knew that we could come into agreement when we yes. when we prayed about something, and uh, uh, and and yet we we have. Uh, you know, we have both grown and progressed from there uh, because I remember Jim and I talking just a few years ago and he said, remember back, and he was talking about a situation that we were <coughs> praying about at one time and he said, um, we had prayed about it and you said, I, I had asked him, I said, well, okay, are, are we prayed through? Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, he said, I wasn't, but I didn't know it at that time. Mm -hmm. And that's <laughs> another issue. Well, that's, that's also a point that you're bringing up there is it's important to, when you get other people praying with you, to get them on the same level you are. In other words, right. not necessarily the same level spiritually, but in the same level in the prayer line that you can pray in agreement together. Mm -hmm. You can't have one guy praying, well, Lord, if it be your will, and another guy knowing the will and praying the will, and then try to get those two guys 
to be in agreement because mm -hmm. that won't happen. That's why it's important when you have somebody pray prayer for you or pray for you that it be on the same lines and the same relevance and word of God where you're at. Mm -hmm. And there, there's another area there too. You have faith in your words, but your faith level may not be for God's absolute best for the situation. Good. Your faith level it may be, well, give the doctor the right wisdom, the right knowledge, and the right tools and right everything to, to solve this physical problem. Good. That's a level. Mm -hmm. But God may have a level that's higher than that where you don't even have to go to the doctor. You don't have to use the doctor's abilities or all these other influences. And, and that's still more. And then he's got to level up here where you never get sick. To have That's to go right. To any of don't them. have to go so, to any of them. You know. so, so faith in your words and, and where you're at. And that's why Romans uh, is so important where it says renew your mind to the word of God. Yeah. That's our job. Well, if you want to get saved but still like to live in the world, God will let you do that for a while. But a day of reckoning will come. He expects you to grow up in your salvation. You can get turned on to the word, walk in the word, and be a word person. People will criticize you for it, call you a cosmic cowboy and other titles and names. They put on word people to, that confess the Bible and act on the word they know, commanding the devils to obey according to the word. And that's an area where a lot of Christianity uh, are ignorant today. Uh, when it talks about commanding evil spirits, commanding them to leave, to do, you know, to do something. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the time, get out, get out, <laughs> leave. Most of the time, leave, yeah. Shut up and um, leave. That's most shut up and leave. Them. That's that's the bottom line. Keep it simple, stupid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> kiss. Uh, and the word kiss before was a group that was satanic. So we use the word kiss in a positive way. That's right. Uh, where do we go? Do you want to go on the next one here and discuss that, or do you want to move on? No, yeah, let's let's go on down through here, ways then. Then at a later point in time, they might get tired and back off. Uh, this is the people that have been in the Word. Yes. People become tired, complacent, and then they quit. Satan is bombarding them. He wants them to quit, and finally they decide, hey, I was doing it right, now I'm doing it all wrong. They want to get back in right standing with God. They want to know without a doubt that they are walking the way God wants them to walk, and there's only one way to do that, be in His Word, and have His Word be first place in their lives. There's an important statement. Okay. Be in His Word, in other words, read it, have his word in you and make it first place. It, it, here we get back to where the world, the problem with society today is pri priorities. Uh, I like what Hilton Sutton in one of his meetings, he was talking about priorities. And that's back when Little League was, was just running rampart throughout the whole society. You know, everybody's big on Little League. And he was coming down on Little League. He said, what's more important, being in church or being in a Little League meeting? Uh, is it more important that your kid learn how to swing a bat and play baseball? Or is it more important that your kid learn the word of God and how to defeat the devil in his own life? And, and he was putting it out, and it really it struck me because he was right on. And the bottom line is, where are your priorities? And that's what this is talking about. If you don't have priority to get the word of God in you, then you're not going to speak it. That's right. Now, go ahead. <laughs> Didn't mean to shut you off. <laughs> God says that when his word is put first place in our lives, Priority. first place in everything we do, then he will give us all the rest of it. We go out and strive and work hard to get the rest of it all on our own, and then we say, okay, God, come along. We've got it all now. We'll support you instead of the other way around. God, you support us as we go out and do your work. His word tells us that he will meet all of our needs by his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. You don't need to meet your needs by good works by your intelligence. That's where your needs are being met now. You're in ser no, if that's where your needs are being met now, you're in serious trouble because the financial consultants of today will tell you that you have to be very careful where you place your money. When you're ready to retire with a nice lump sum of money in your retirement fund accumulated over many years of working, the place in which you put it may go bankrupt and you'll lose it all. Then what have your good works done for you? You have to rely on God and let him lead and direct you and tell you what to do with all these things. There comes a point in time where we have to exercise the authority that God has given us. Now, there's another place where we, we have to recognize the faith in our words that has authority. Mm -hmm. and, and backing up to the last paragraph here, 
not too long ago, we saw a lot of retirement funds, a lot of retirement plans, a lot of retirement possibilities come screeching down to naught. Mm -hmm. uh, it hurt hundreds, maybe thousands of people because of mismanagement in the financial realm of individual companies, mm -hmm. uh, in, in financial companies that dealt, deals with deals with financial things that's their business mm -hmm. and they there's crooks in all of them mm -hmm. <laughs> god saying basically don't rely on the crooks to preserve your money for you to okay. reserve your retirement but re rely on him to reserve to to reserve and, and maintain your retirement well we have to recognize authority that we have in the words we speak because we're putting our faith in those words and we expect god to respond uh, he says, trust him. I, I go, in my prayer time in the mornings, a lot of time when she's lay, we're laying in bed and I'm awake and she is, and I'll, I'll converse with God and I'll, I'll say, you know, what do you want us to do today? You know, what is the priority for us today to do, to accomplish? Is it something we need to do in our own physical lives or is there, is there a divine appointment we need to make? Uh, or other things. And I can relate back to Sometimes the divine appointment would cross our path during the day, and, and we didn't even recognize it per se at the time, but we look back and we say, gee, God put that person at that place and time to talk to him for a reason. Uh, sometimes when you, like when I'm in the chaplain's office at the college, uh, kids will come by and they, they may say just a few words, just hi or, you know, what, just all kinds of short, quick conversations. But yet you don't know when your response to those what what kind of a blessing that might be to them just the fact that you responded. Mm -hmm. uh, there's seeds being planted there, and, and sometimes we lose sight of that fact and don't give it much credence when it may become something tremendous down the road a ways. Okay, shall we move on? <laughs> mm, yeah, let's move on. Let him as stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Ephesians 4, 28. God wants us to do good works. He's not against good works, but we need to do them in line with his leading. Then those good works will be blessed, multiplied, and we'll have the things to do with what we need to do. Comments. Well, there again... <laughs> You're back to the order of priorities. God, God does not withhold things from us, but He wants us to. You know, that's, it's not God's plan to take things from us, but it's His plan that we have everything in order, and and we we want to we want to major in on things, and 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 gather all the things up, and then then we'll well we'll take care of the 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 people, uh, where God's priority is on eternal things, which are people. Um, and uh, you know, people and and his word are the only eternal things that are uh, that we ever get to deal with, and uh, all of this other uh, we spend all of our time uh, dealing with peripheral things rather than centering in and, and dealing with uh, with the real things. That's it, right. It's a little bit like uh, um, the one brother used to tell the story about the the guy in the cobwebs, and uh, uh, you know, we spend <laughs> our time brushing cobwebs when we should be killing spiders. That's right. And uh, Caps Caps ministries along those lines too about dealing with the problem and not the not the symptoms. Mm -hmm. Well, we need to we need to get where you know and and here again, God is not against good works, but they need to be good works that are motivated from the spiritual realm rather than from the natural realm, and uh, because the natural man knows how to do good things, but they can only go so far where the where if you get it over in the spiritual realm, it not only blesses you and the person that you're that you're dealing with. But uh, others on out beyond that. God can do more with a little bit than, than, than we can with a lot. I think this idea about priority uh, is really right now in our time frame in society is, is a real major thing that we as Christians, the worldly people aren't going to get their priorities right. They, they don't know enough to do that. But we as Christians should. And unfortunately, there's a lot of Christians that don't know what the priorities should be. So they go, really they're going along kind of the blind leading the blind. As Jesus said, they both fall in a ditch. Well, 
we need to be above that. We need to seek God in what direction we're going to go, what, what is our priority for today, uh, and, and make sure then that we follow through on what he's told us to do. I'd love to go back and minister to Indians some more, and I, and I know that sometime in the future I will get to, but I don't know when. We had some disruptions. It's changed a lot of our, a lot of our plans, but I want to go back and see, you know, is that part of what God's plan was? Because uh, of things that's happened, our plans and our ministry has changed around. Now, here we're, you know, we have never stopped teaching the Word on TV because that's where God called us in the first place. Uh, so our priority is to do this, to feed the people out there so they can grow and glow and get their priorities right, learn some of these basic things, and I hope they're taping the programs and listen to them over and over again and glean all these good nuggets of truth that we're putting out there because we go through so much stuff uh, that, you know, you can't get it, you can't absorb it all in one session. That's why we're up to 20-some sessions now and we still haven't got the book <laughs> completed as far as the commentaries go. Well, you, you made one statement there um, uh, as you were going through about uh, non-Christians getting their priorities. It doesn't. If you're not a Christian, it doesn't make any difference what priorities you have. Well, that's true. Uh, one pri one set of priorities just goes the other. Bad, yeah. Good or bad. Uh, none of them are going to amount to anything. So. Well, the the point there, I guess, it, is that the Christians should be doing what God wants them to do. Right. They should be. Doing and and we see that in the political realm now where. I think that Christians have sat back so many years and have just got fed up with politics in general, government in general, and we want to see a change. And, and I, uh, I don't want to go off here too far and chase this rabbit too far, but uh, the fact of it is I think we're seeing a change in the priority of the Christians relevant to government and politics that we didn't see earlier because they're more getting involved, and that's what's making a lot of the political arena nervous because the Christians are beginning to speak up. They're not sitting there and say, sit down and shut up. No, we're standing up and we're speaking out. And, and as Christians, we have a right to do that. This is this is a country that's supposed to have freedom of speech. You don't have to agree with me, but I have a right to say what I believe, the same as the next person does. And we don't have to agree with them. But I think uh, one of the reasons this country is in the shape it is because the Christians have not in the past put their priorities right, and spoke up when they needed to. And I think that's why we see a lot of things on the books, laws, that really shouldn't even be there. And it's because the Christians have sat back on their hands and not said anything. Well, be a good, stay, be a good Christian and stay in your church. Mm -hmm. Don't come out here in the world and mess with us. That's the attitude. Well, uh, that is changing. Well, irregardless of where it is, if there is a problem, the, the news media has it right. It's the Christian's fault. <laughs> well, the that Christian, part's true. <laughs> because the Christians are the only ones that can change, change it. Change it, right. And, and the world doesn't know that. We're, we're the only ones that have the ability to change it and to, and to put spiritual principles into well, into effect, yes. begin to believe our words and speak, speak yes. correctly about the situation and see come to pass what God wants to come to pass rather than what we want come to pass. That's, that's the trouble. We always want to put all of the emphasis on what we want or what we think we want or what we ought to have. And, and God knows the end from the beginning. He yes. knows what we should have. He knows what step we need to take next he, to, to get to where he wants us to be. And, and yet we, we don't want to listen to him. We don't want to put the word again first place in our life. And so consequently we've, we've got we've, all of these problems. We've had, we have these problems that came from the past. But thank God that's changing. Thank God. It, the, it is changing. And, and, and it's, it's doing good. There was a special on TV just the other night about that. You know, here's these evangelical Christians. You know, what are they doing to our society? Well, we should have been doing it years ago. We should never have let it change in the first place. And that's our fathers and our forefathers' problem because they're the ones. And they, well, <laughs> another rabbit, and I really don't want to chase that one too far. Like that you don't have time chasing for. Oh, that's right. But uh, here again, we're 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 trying to encourage you and challenge you and 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 get you to looking at at what you're saying and and do you believe what you say 
uh, because what we have today is the total of our talking yesterday. Yes. So if we want to change where we're at and what's going on in our life, we're telling you how to do it. Now, we may not be accomplishing it the best that we can. Uh, we're accomplishing it very slowly, but that's the that's what we're doing with this program, Great and Mighty Things. So tune in again to the next program, and we'll, we'll tell you more. We'll pick up again. <laughs>